Hello, it's six o'clock, which means what? It's time to hear the word of the Lord. I am Bishop Van Sharp. What an honor, what a thrill it is to be able to share this word with you this evening. It is my prayer on behalf of my lovely wife, Reese and I, that you had a tremendous Sunday. That's right. I pray that you had a tremendous Sunday morning, that you heard the word of the Lord from your man of God or your woman of God or from many of these great apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the five-fold ministry that is made available to you through Facebook as well as YouTube. It is my prayer that you take advantage of all this that is available to the body of Christ so that we can be strong in the Lord. Well, tonight we're going to get right into the word of God. We're going to talk to you about be healed in the name of Jesus because that's what we want you to do is be healed in Jesus' name because when you're healed, you're whole. When you're healed, you're well. When you're healed, you're able to finish your assignment with great strength and great vigor and great power. Well, before we do that, amen, while you're chiming in, texting somebody, emailing somebody, I want you to hear this powerful song by a great, great psalmist in the body of Christ today, Todd Delaney. He's a young man, a mighty man that sings to uplift the name of Jesus Christ. And he sings this song that relates to healing. It's called Do It All Again. You're doing it again. And everything that God has done as it relates to healing, because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it back then, he's ready to do it again in your life and mine. He's ready to heal that cancer. He's ready to heal and dry up those tumors and cause the pain in your body to disappear. This song by Todd Delaney, I have no rights and, no, and none of that to it. But it's a powerful song that's going to bless your life. Come on, Todd. Take us into the presence of God. Do it again. Amen. He's doing it all again. Amen. Text somebody. Amen. Call somebody. Let me know you're there. Let me know you're watching tonight. We got a brand new one. I'm going to share with you now. Are you ready? Goes like this. You make the blind man see. Yes, hallelujah. Make the lame man walk again. You call the dead to rest. And that's why we dance in liberty. Because you're doing it all again. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, because yeah. you're doing it all again. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh Shout out to Mother Evangeline Whitaker. Man. As well as shout out to Rachel Moses and her husband Lowe, as well as Brianna Moses. Shout out to Ricky Pender. All right, man, you're back from this morning. Way to go, man. Keep tuning in, sir. Still saved. Yeah. Hallelujah. Still Shout out to Deacon Bobby Gaston, as well as to your lovely wife. We call her Vanessa, Lady V. Come on now. Shout out to Teresa Johnson. Shout out to Patricia Burton and Charles Burton. Are you ready? Shout out to Wanda Brown and her watch party. Hallelujah. That's good about the Lord. One thing about the Lord Jesus Christ is the same. Hallelujah. yesterday. He's healing today. Woo! Mm. I 
Hallelujah. Bless you, Deneen Burra. Abaro. Hallelujah. Shout out to the Battle family. Deacon Dennis, Battle, and Bonita. Come on. Woo! Don't forget, call somebody, text somebody, anybody that you know that's sick, anybody you know that's dealing with ailments in their body, there's nothing too hard for God to do. And He wants them well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shout out to Ladoris Leonard tonight. Thank you for watching, as well as to Pastor uh, the Rainers, the Pastor Rainer, Pastor uh, Joe Rainer, and your wonderful wife. Amen. We shout out to her. Amen. Lisa Rainer, to the Rainers, we shout out to you, Foundation of Truth Ministries in Raleigh, North Carolina. Amen. Let's get ready to pray now and go into the word of God. Father, thank you for your rich, rich word. I thank you that I believe as I preach this afternoon that I'm preaching and teaching and this word will go in good ground and bring forth a harvest. I thank you that you would think through my mind, speak through my lips, a relevant word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Shout out to Dwayne Williams tonight. Thank you for watching, sir. Amen. Now, we're talking about be healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus' ministry, the ministry of Jesus Christ himself, his ministry was a ministry of signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. And even so today, those of us who have been called to preach and teach the word of God, we shouldn't just preach the word of God and teach the word of God without expecting signs and wonders and miracles to follow the assignment to follow the call. In fact, that's one way of knowing that God has his hand and his approval on our ministry. If you read in the word of God, the Bible says, shout out to Tanya Vaughn, shout out to you tonight, amen. The Bible said that Jesus in Acts 2.22, it says, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, Acts 2.22 Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So part of Jesus' ministry was signs, wonders, and miracles. So if we're calling ourselves ministers of the gospel, we should expect miracles, signs, and wonders to follow us as we preach and teach the word of God. God confirms his word with signs following. The disciples, they went and preached everywhere and signs followed them as they preached the word because God confirmed his word with signs following. How do I know whether or not God is speaking through you or not? Because anything that God is saying that's in line with his written word, he will confirm it with signs and wonders. He will, he, will, he will bring a powerful demonstration to prove that he has sent forth that word that we're speaking. And even so, we need the word of God now with sickness and disease being as rampant as it is. And of course, more and more people are going through and feeling sick and pain in their body today. They're overloaded in the hospitals with this virus and other things. We need to get our faith in the name of Jesus Christ for miracles, signs, and wonders, and get our faith in the power of God to heal the body. He created it, and he knows how to make it well. In fact, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Acts 10 and 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, 
for God was with them. So we told you last week that the devil is the one who wants people oppressed. He wants people loaded down and weighed down with sickness and disease and not being able to finish and complete the assignment in the kingdom of God or to, to finish living out their lives in a good old age and see their grandchildren and their children's children grow up. Shout out to Miss Dottie Bell tonight. Amen. She just turned 94 years old. Amen. And so, amen. Miss Dottie Bell White, 94 years old. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. She's my uh, brother's uh, wife, mother. Amen. So we send a shout out to her. Now, again, the scripture I gave you was Mark 16. Mark 16. And I won't read all of it. I'll just read uh, verses 18 through 20. Mark 16, verses 18 through 20. Last time I read 15 through 20. It says, they shall take up serpents. He's talking about these signs will follow them that believe. He said, in my name, they will do these things. He said, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Here's the part I want you to catch. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into, the, into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following, amen. God wants to confirm this word of healing. In fact, we have a book out called Where Are Those Miracles Releasing the Power of God? Because you need to understand how that God wants to even the more release miracles your way and my way. In this book, we talk about miracles in the healing uh, in healing and miracles in finance. But tonight we're talking about be healed in Jesus name because it's the name of Jesus and faith in the name of Jesus that cause people that are uh, unable to walk to be able to walk. That cause people who cannot see to be able to see. It's our faith being released in the name of Jesus. People don't get healed because of our holiness or our power, but they get healed by the power of the Holy Spirit and faith in the name of Jesus Christ. When we release our faith in the name of Jesus Christ, people are able to get healed because the name Jesus entails all that God is. The name Jesus means Savior. Savior, a deliverer, uh, one who brings freedom, one who comes to liberate, and sickness brings bondage, but healing brings us to a place of liberation and freedom, and God wants us free. Now, one of God's covenant names in the Old Testament, and there were many, was Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha means the Lord who heals, or he is our healer, of both the body and the soul. God is our healer. He's our healer and he wants us well. Hallelujah. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up the wounds and he also wants us well in our physical body. In fact, look at Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter four and I'm gonna read verses 20 through 22 that makes you value the word of God that's coming out of your man of God's mouth or your woman of God's mouth Anybody who's teaching and preaching the word, that's what we're called to do, preach the word. Amen. Now listen at what it says in Proverbs 4, verses 20, 21, and 22. It says, my son, attend to my words. In other words, give your focus to the word of God. Give your attention to the word of God. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart out of thine eyes or let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. So the words that we preach and teach that are in line with the will and the purpose of God, they bring healing to all our flesh. The word health that's used here in the Hebrew is the word mape. It is spelled M-A-R-P-E. It's pronounced mape. And mape means the cure. 
the deliverance, the remedy, the soundness, the wholesomeness, and the yielding and the profit. So the words that we read and that we see in the word of God, they are profitable. They bring soundness. They bring deliverance. They bring the remedy for whatever we need. So that's why we value the word of God. The word of God is precious. It is it's like hidden treasures. And I'm telling you, it'll bring about a healing in your body. All right? That's what we're talking about. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to say something real quick. Amen? That's very, very important. I want to give you some points real quick that uh, we're going to get in the way to establish what God wants to do in our lives. Okay? I want to give you several points here that I think is about 11 reasons why people may face sickness and disease. Give you about 11 reasons why people may face sickness and disease and why they're dealing maybe with sickness and disease. And these are good, good points and I want you to get them. Number one, we created bad eating habits when we were young and continued to practice them as we grew or as we grow older. Let me say it again. We've created, we create rather, bad habits when we're young, bad eating habits when we're young, and we continue to practice them when we grow older. And one thing about the body, the body has to be taken care of, the body. The body goes back to the dust from whence it came, so it's not eternal, and it has to be taken care of. It's temporal. Our spirit and soul is eternal. And therefore, a lot of times we got bad eating habits that we develop when we're young and we continue them as we get older, which leads to health issues, which leads to diabetes and other problems because we're not as active as we were when we were young. Amen? So we have to understand that eating healthy we'll reverse some of those things that are in our body that's messing our bodies up. We can reverse it through eating, he eating healthy or through healthy foods. I'm going to give you about 18, uh, well, no, 20, 20 healthy foods, okay? I'm going to give you about 20 healthy foods real quick. You can write them down. Again, all of this that I'm saying, if I'm seeming to go too fast for you, you can watch it on Facebook live after it goes off, or you can go to YouTube, amen, in about 10 or 15 minutes after it goes off and watch it again. All right, let's look at some healthy foods that will help our bodies get well or recover. Now, again, we're going to talk about the healing in the name of Jesus, but these are practical things, again, that mess up people's health, and we're trying to reverse it and get in some good health. All right, number one, spinach. Number two, blueberries. Number three, salmon. Even they say that salmon helps reduce depression. Number four, almonds. Almonds lower heart disease and lower signs of aging. I, my wife and I, we love to eat almonds. Amen. And uh, number five, walnuts. I love walnuts as well. Number six, flaxseed. F-L-A-X-S-E-E-D. Flaxseed. Number seven, beans. Beans soak up cholesterol before it gets to your arteries. Amen? You know, the Bible's talked about lentils. Beans. Amen? Beans. It may give you gas, but it'll soak up that cholesterol before it gets to your arteries. Number eight, broccoli. Broccoli. Broccoli gets rid of cancer, causing compounds. And you want to get rid of all those cancer com uh, uh, causing compounds, broccoli help you do that. Number nine, I love this one, kale. My wife fix a lot of kale soup. Amen. In the wintertime, I eat a lot of kale. Kale soup. Kale is healthy. Number 10, avocados. Number 11, sweet potatoes. You know, sweet potatoes, amen, they'll even tell you they're way better for you than baked potatoes. Amen. My wife, amen, she eats a lot of sweet potatoes. Amen. Shout out to Yvette Wheeler 
and Shinora Powell tonight. All right, number 12, apples. Apples are a good source of vitamin C. Number 13, oats, oats. Number 14, beets, beets. Number 15, carrots, carrots. These are healthy foods now. Number 16, cherry tomatoes. Amen, that's why you go to certain salad bars, they have those cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are very, very healthy for you. Number, number, uh, that was number 16. Number 17 is green peas. Green peas are good and healthy for you. Number 18, chili peppers. Chili peppers are also good, healthy for the body. Number 19, garlic. Garlic boosts your immune system and helps you fight cancer. Number 20, dark chocolate. Not every kind of chocolate, but dark chocolate is also good for you. These are 20 little things, and of course, there are way more healthy foods than these. I'm only giving you 20 of them that you can go back again, hear this stuff again on Facebook, and hear this stuff again, amen, and get it in your spirit. Almonds and blueberries and, and walnuts, and these things are good for us and are healthy for the body, all right? Number two, what can cause us to have bad health and everything else is our emphasis stays on our looks instead of moving away from our looks into our health. You understand? I mean, you know when you're young, all you think about is being pretty, being cute, being fine, and you're not even paying attention to how you're eating. A lot of people look good, but they're unhealthy. A lot of people look well, but they're sick, and they have, they're like that because they are paying more attention to their looks than they are their health. Even when you're trying to lose weight, don't just try to do it for the sake of your looks. Do it for the sake of your health. Amen. Let that be your underlining and your main motive because you want to be healthy again to finish your assignment to grow old with your children's children. Number three, the third reason why there's a lot of bad health, amen, is because of poor sleeping habits. Poor sleeping habits. A lot, you got to understand that you and I need eight to 10 hours of sleep, amen? And you got to get your sleep. When you have poor sleeping habits, you will automatically mess up your health, all right? Number four, we know this one, smoking and drinking. We know that smoking cigarettes and drinking. Have you ever noticed that the doctors always ask that when you go in the doctor, do you smoke or do you drink? Why are they asking that? Because they already know it causes health issues. Even while this pandemic is going on, they challenging people who smoke to stop it, people who drink to stop it. And yet people talking about when they're going to open back up the bars. They don't understand that whenever you smoke and you drink, you tear up the body. You mess up the body because it wasn't made for that to go into it. Wine and, 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 and uh, alcohol, amen, at the pace and the level we drink. Somebody said, well, didn't the Bible they do it? Amen. Because there was not medicine, amen, uh, available like things are now. And a lot of things had to be purified and, and kept a different way. But today we understand we got refrigerators. We got other things to take care of stuff. And we don't need to be putting this kind of Thunderbird and grapefruit juice and vodka and all this mess in our bodies now. We need to take care of it. Number five, not knowing how to walk in peace instead of worrying and fear. When people worry and they fear, they, they damage the body. You can get ulcers by worrying so much. You can tear the body down through worrying, not knowing how to walk in the peace of God. You have to remember that God wants you to walk and live in peace. He wants you to not let your heart be troubled, but believe his word. Number six, being hateful and walking in unforgiveness. When you walk in unforgiveness and you're being hateful, and before we got saved, the book of Titus tells us that we were hateful, that we were people who were not nice. We were people who were living a hateful life. Amen. You did something to me. We did something to you back. Amen. An eye for an eye, two for two. That's the, two, that's the kind of mindset we had. But now the kindness of God has appeared and now we're able to walk in love and walk in forgiveness. No matter what people have done to you, 
You got to be willing to forgive them because it will mess your body up. Holding on to stuff, holding on to grudges, amen, holding on to the past will destroy the body. All right, number seven, being employed by unconcerned employers who were more concerned with profit and their top line than your health and your well-being. See, some of us are working for companies and people who care nothing about our health. And a lot of times people are, 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 are working these long, long hours and not getting the proper rest and their bodies are broke down. And even on some jobs, women are being asked to lift up heavy patients and they tan their whole body up. That makes no sense at all to me. They need to hire some strong men and let these men lift up this. When you lifting up dead weight, trying to move these folks, amen, in a rest home or whatever, in the hospital, my God, you will tear your back up, tear your body up. These employers don't care about you. You have to recognize, hey, this, this guy too heavy, this man too heavy. Y'all better get somebody here to move this man. Don't you mess up your body. Amen. My wife can tell you, I have no back issues. Why? Because I'm never going to grab anything too heavy for me. I check it out. I bend down where it's at, and I check it out a little bit before I lift it. Amen. And I'll let it stay there and sit there. Amen. Till I get somebody to help me lift it because I'm not going to damage my back. I'm not going to destroy my body messing with stuff. Amen. Even these restaurants, they got these big heavy trades and these people be carrying all this stuff. Ladies be doing all that. They don't care nothing about your health. They care about their profit, their top line. And watch this now. Also, a man being employed by these unconcerned employees mess up because, watch this, I told you that this morning, but I want you to hear it again. 85 to 90% of people are unhappy on their jobs. And watch this now. This is what I want you to catch out of this. Most people uh, relate strokes and heart attacks to smoking. They, relate, they re, uh, relate smoking and drinking to causing strokes and heart attacks. And they do, and it does. But what you need to know is this, that most heart attacks, write this down, most heart attacks and strokes occur between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Monday morning. Did you catch what I just said? Most heart attacks and strokes occur during the hours of 8 a.m., and 9 a.m. on Monday morning. Because most people, again, are going to jobs that they hate. <laughs> Y'all catch that. Did you hear when most heart attacks occur? Even they said preachers. You know when most preachers have a stroke and a heart attack? Monday morning. Because they now went to church. They found out they didn't meet budget. And they now dealt with them members. Some of them now left the church going somewhere else. Because a lot of people, they now they just circulate. Amen. The body of Christ ain't witnessing and evangelizing as we should. And we're going to be talking about that a lot more. Amen. Later down the road. Amen. So a lot of times it's the same old folks switching here, switching there, running here, running there. We need some long distance runner. That's what my new book is all about. Some people that can go the distance, that will stick stuff out instead of just jumping over here and jumping over there. And so you can imagine a lot of pastors die Monday morning. Most pastors die Monday morning. Amen. Because a lot of times they even are preaching and teaching the word. And then after they preach and teach the word, folks want, want some counseling done. No, no, no. When you preach and teach the word, you just gave them counseling. Now it's time for you to go home. Now it's time for you and your wife and family to go home and get some rest and get some food. Amen. Are you understanding me? All right. All right. Number eight. Not getting enough vitamin D from being outside. This causes a health issue. And most of us now, we're inside all the time. Even our children, most of them are inside playing on their tablets and doing stuff. People are not outside. And the, we need the vitamin D from the sun. We need to get outside, get some fresh air. Even while this pandemic is going on, you ain't got to go to no grocery store and to no mall. You can just go outside and walk Go to your mailbox. Walk outside. Go outside to your mailbox. Go get the mail and stay out there and, and let the sun hit you a little bit. Hallelujah. Number nine. Watch this one now. 
not moving or getting enough exercise. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and, 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 and try to cut grass in 90 and 100 degree weather. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> That's ignorant. Don't do that. But listen at me. While a lot of people have bad health, it's because we're not moving and getting enough exercise. See, when you were young, you were running, you were moving, you were doing something. You lived a very active life. And now that you're older, you're sitting. Most jobs now are sitting jobs. You're sitting down. You're not moving. You're not active. Amen. And a lot of times your bones stiffen and everything else start hurting until you get to moving again. Because man was created for movement. You were created to be moving. You were created to be active. You ought to live an active life. So even as you get older, now you've got to make exercise or something a part of your regiment or daily routine because you got to start moving. All right, number 10. People are predisposed and not knowing how to walk by faith. What do I mean? Certain diseases attack us because our parents did not take care of their body or our parents had a disease that predisposed us to ailments. And now we got to use our faith to get it out of our bloodline and get it out of our life so it won't uh, contaminate the next generation. You know what I'm talking about. The doctors, when they start asking questions, all right, did anybody in your family have cancer and all that? Because they understand the bloodline. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that washes us and cleanses us and puts us in a new bloodline and gets rid of that old stuff. And you don't have to die of what killed mama. You don't have to die of what killed daddy. A lot of people, even that are attacked with breast cancer, a lot of times they find out that their mother had it, their grandmama had it. So you got to get it, get rid of it through faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's why we're teaching you about being healed in the name of Jesus. All right? We are predisposed to certain things. All right? So they've exposed us to stuff. Amen? All right. Yeah, that's the truth. They check out high blood pressure. They, they, they see what's in your lineage. They understand. See, that's a medical science stuff. But again, we can circumvent all that by faith in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Because we have a covenant with God and we learn the word of God. And I'm going to give you many scriptures because I just told you the word is health and healing to all thy flesh. All right. And number 11, why sickness and disease attack people body? Number 11, because we're in a fallen world. When Adam sinned, it caused death, and we know that death, amen, sickness and disease came out of sin. Sickness, disease, and death came because of sin. If Adam had never sinned, he would never been, sickness would have never been out here. If Adam had never sinned, nobody would ever have to die physically. But when Adam sinned, remember what Jesus said? I mean, what God the Father told him, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. So Adam passed on death to everybody. No matter how long we live, eventually we are going to physically die. Unless Jesus raptured us, raptures us out of here, we're going to physically die. But I want to live and maximize my life while I'm here. And that's why we're teaching you this word. We're not teaching this word so you will never die. We know with all the healing scriptures I know, with all the word I got in me, that one day I will leave this world. But I want to live this life strong and healthy and vibrant the way that the Bible says I have an opportunity to live. And that's what I'm teaching you tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's get some healing scriptures in us. Bless you, Prophetess Mary Fleming. A shout out to you tonight. All right. Now, let's go to Proverbs 18 and 14. Let's go to Proverbs 18 and 14. And it says this, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Now, notice what it says again. The spirit of a man, the inner man, the inner you will sustain your infirmity. So if I get this word inside my spirit, I can overcome the challenges that I have in my body. 
My spirit is the part of me that needs the word. My flesh don't eat the word. My flesh lives by collard greens. My flesh lives by uh, blueberries and all those healthy foods I told you about. My flesh lives by that. But the Bible said in Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, we do need natural food to stay alive. But that ain't the only way you live. Your inner man, your spirit man, lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your spirit needs the word. The more word you put inside of you, the stronger you make your outer man because the spirit will take authority over the body and cause the body to get well. Do you understand that? Your spirit, when your spirit is broken, when your spirit is weak, all of a sudden you can be sick because your spirit is not strong enough to sustain you. Your inner man is made strong by praying in the Holy Ghost and by reading the word of God and meditating in the word of God and feasting on the word of God. Hallelujah. Jude verse 20 says, you beloved building up yourselves. He's talking about your inner self by praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so you should pray in the Holy Ghost a whole lot. Pray in tongues a whole lot. Hallelujah. Because it opens your eyes up to the spirit realm and it also makes your spirit man strong and you become strong inwardly even though, amen, there's something attacking your body outwardly. All right. Hallelujah. Now, when Abimelech was sick because Abimelech wanted to take Sarah as his wife and Sarah was married to Abraham. And what God had to do was use Abraham to pray for Abimelech. Look at Genesis 20 and verse 17. Genesis 20 and verse 17. It says, so Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bear children. God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservant because Abraham prayed for him. So we understand that God wants to heal people. God don't want people sick. God don't want people full of disease. Satan does. He is the one that wants to oppress the lives of people. In fact, look at what God said about himself in Exodus 15 and 26. He gives that covenant name, Jehovah Rapha, in the latter part of the verse. Well, let me go to read the whole verse. It says in Exodus 15 and 26, and said, if thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and would do that which is right in his sight, and would give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord, watch this, not that maketh thee sick, but, but healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Rapha. That word healeth, I talk about it in this book, uh, that word healeth, Jehovah Rapha, is a word that's found also in other places in the Bible. But let me tell you what it means. This word, Rapha, means to mend, to repair, to make whole, to make healthy, and to cure. Let me say it again. This word, Rapha, means to repair, to mend, to make whole to make healthy and to cure. Say it one more time. It means to mend, to repair, to make whole, to make healthy and to cure. It also means, watch this, it means physician. I am the Lord that heals thee. I am your physician, glory to God. God wants to be your doctor. God wants to be your doctor. It means physician or to mend by stitching. God said, I want to stitch you up. I want to be your physician. 
Y'all know last week I gave you that scripture in the book of 2 Chronicles where the man Asa sought to the physicians instead of the Lord and he ended up dying of a disease in his foot. In 2 Chronicles, I think it was 16 and uh, 16, I think it was, or 16 and 2, amen, where he did not seek the Lord concerning that condition in his body and it messed them up. God wanted him to rely on God. God wanted him to trust God because before when Asa and the people were surrounded, he trusted God and God gave him a supernatural victory. And so this time God wants him to trust him with this disease. Think about it. You believe God to save your soul and you won't believe God to heal your body. Come on. You believe God to give you everlasting life through Jesus Christ, and you don't think that same God who saved your soul will heal your body? Of course he will. You got to trust him and believe the report of the Lord. 2 Chronicles 16 and 12. 2 Chronicles 16 and 12. You can read it in your spare time. All right. Now, look at Deuteronomy 7, and let's look at verse number 15. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. The Lord said, and the Bible said this, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases. This, set, this is Deuteronomy 7 and 15. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. Be healed in the name of Jesus. That's what we're talking about. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Notice what he said, all sickness. All means what? None left out. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Again, this is old covenant, and God is talking about how that in the in Egypt there should have been sickness and disease, but in Israel, among his people, he wanted his people well. Remember the Bible? God brought them out with silver and gold, and there was not a feeble one among their tribes. God wants us not weak and feeble and not being able to do what we need to do. God wants us healthy and strong. Hallelujah. Now look at what the Bible says, amen, in the word of God about uh, Hezekiah. Hezekiah was one that the man of God, Isaiah, came and told him, set your house in order because you're going to die. But watch what happened. In 2 Kings, I believe it's 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 5. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 20 and verse number 5. All right, all this is Bible. We're looking at the Bible because the Bible is our answer. It holds our, our answer. And so we want to get this word deep in our heart. All right? God sends Isaiah to Hezekiah, but then God tells him, turn around, go back, give Hezekiah this word. He said, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And God added 15 extra years to this man's life. Hezekiah, was he saved and filled with the Holy Ghost like you and I? No, he was just a man that wanted to do what was right in the sight of God, who was a king. And Isaiah the prophet turns around and tells him, God has heard your prayer and seen your tears. Now you and I are under a better covenant established upon better promises. Now why would God heal Hezekiah and don't want to heal us. And the blood of Jesus had not been shed yet. During Hezekiah day, they were living by the blood of goats, the blood of bulls. That was a picture and a shadow and a type of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you and I have Jesus. He's already come. He's already come. That's why Isaiah said in, in the book of Isaiah, he said, with his stripes, ye, we are healed. But Peter picked it up and Peter said with his stripes, 
ye were healed. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 2, and I think it's verse number 24. 1 Peter 2 and 24. Amen. So we understand that God wants us well. He wants us healed. He wants us whole in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that's what the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 5. God said, with his stripes, we are healed. But in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, in 2 and 24, he said, amen, by his stripes, ye were healed. That's 1 Peter 2 and 24. Jesus bore our sins on his, in his body. In fact, 1 Peter 2 and 24, let me read it to you. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now there, in relationship to what Isaiah said and Peter said, God is not talking about you being healed spiritually. He's talking about you being healed physically in your body. Physically. In fact, if you read the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, and verse number 13, Matthew 8, verse 13, the Bible says something in Matthew 8 and 13. Go to Matthew 8 and 13, and you'll see that it was talking about you being healed in your physical body. All right? Matthew 8, Matthew chapter 8, and we're going to look at verse number 13. Okay? Matthew 8 and verse 13, it said this. All right. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. He was healed how? Physically. Y'all see that that man was healed? How? This man was healed physically. How was he healed? Physically. All right. Now, let's look at uh, Matthew 8. And I want to look at verse uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me see what I want here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want the verse uh, that says himself took our infirmities. That Jesus himself took our infirmities. I think I talk about it in this Bible here. All right. Okay, there it is. Matthew 8. Matthew 8 and 17. Let's go to Matthew 8 and 17. All right? Let's go to verse 16 and 17. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. All, a lot of these scriptures I'm giving you are found in this book, but we're talking about be healed in the name of Jesus. But this book, where are those miracles releasing the power of God? Now, <clears throat> it's very important that you understand about the word. The word must be where? In your eyes. You must look at it. Don't go by memory. A lot of people, they don't get well because they say, I know that already. I memorized these scriptures. There's something about looking into the law of liberty. This is a law of liberty. It'll set you free when you look at it. You got to look at it. Look into the word and then let the word of God get in your ear gate by you reading it and talking it out loud. When I'm around my wife, I read the Bible silently. I'm studying. But then when she's not around, I read it out loud. I talk the word out loud so I can hear it myself and I get a revelation that I would have never got. The word of God. All right. Now, let's look at Matthew 8, 16 and 17. It says, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits, how? With his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Again, this word that Jesus healed all that were sick is the word in the Greek. The Greek word for heal is the word, watch this, therapuo. Therapuo is the word we get our English word therapy from. Therapuo is spelled T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-O. T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-O. And it means to cure and to relieve of diseases. Watch this. It also means to restore to health. Hallelujah. 
Jesus took away sickness. He took away sickness. He don't want sickness on your body. Don't let nobody talk you into being sick. You let them talk you into being well. Stand on the promises of God and believe what God said. Hallelujah. See, sickness come from a law of sin and death. If Adam had never sinned, we would have never known sickness. So the Bible speaks about that law of the spirit of life. Look at uh, Romans 8, verse 1 and 2. Romans 8, verses 1 and 2. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Catch the next verse. I'm going to read on verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. See, Jesus suffered and became sin for us so we can experience the result of righteousness. You and I are righteous in God's sight because God sees us through the blood of Jesus Christ. And as a result of Jesus bearing our reproach, bearing our sicknesses and bearing our pains, he bore them so you and I wouldn't have to bear them. If somebody right now tell you they went downtown and paid your light bill and they got the receipt showing you they paid your light bill, you're not going to argue and fuss and be mad at them for paying your light bill and go down there and try to pay it again. You're going to say, thank you. <laughs> and you ain't going to pay it because you're going to say what? It's already been paid. Glory to God. And that's what you and I ought to be saying. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price so that we could be free from sickness and disease. Glory to God. When the man was sick with leprosy, he said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. What did Jesus say? I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. Jesus gave his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Jesus called the disciples together, gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He wants us well today in Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 1. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus gave, called the disciples together, gave them power. And he had just done it in uh, Matthew 9, and I believe it's verse number 38. Amen. Matthew 9 and 38 or Matthew 9 and 35. I'm just quoting because I'm flowing right now. I want you to get this. Amen. Hallelujah. It's Matthew 9 and uh, verse number 35. Matthew 9 and 35 says, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, what did he do first? Teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. See, Jesus did it first so that you and I know what to do. If Jesus went around making people sick, you and I would be making people sick. But Jesus went about healing the sick. So you and I should go about what? Healing the sick. That's why in Matthew 10 and 1, again, he called the disciples together, gave them power against unclean spirit. He gave them authority. I told you that Greek word there is not dunamis. That Greek word in Matthew, Matthew 10 and 1 is exousia. Or some people pronounce it exousia. That means really, amen, authority. He gave them jurisdiction against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Woo, glory to God. My time go by so fast as I teach you about this healing because God wants you well. He wants you healed. Amen. In, in 1 Peter 2 and 24, when it says with his stripes you are healed, the Greek word for healed there is spelled I-A-O-M-A-I. Some people pronounce it Iaome. Iaome. Iaome means to cure to make whole, to be free from error or sin. It means to bring about one's salvation. So as a result of Jesus, your deliverance has been brought about. <laughs> Glory to God. You have to wait to the other side to get healed. You can get healed on this side. 
God wants you to live well on this side. He wants you whole on this side. Think about it. If God didn't want you well, why are you going to the doctor? Why are you trying to take medicine? Think about it. If God is making you sick, can't no doctor make you well. That's why you know God did not send this pandemic. Because a lot of people are being attacked with it. But look how many people are coming out okay. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his mercy. And a lot of them, while they're there, they're saying, help me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. And God is healing. Because, hey, if you ask him to heal you, he will heal you. I don't care how long you had the disease. I shared with you last week that there was a woman who had the disease 12 years. And Jesus said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Another man had a disease 38 years. These people had these diseases a long time, but Jesus came on the scene. And when Jesus came on the scene, the diseases got off their bodies. He made them well. And in the name of Jesus, God wants you well today. You need to get this book. And some of you got this book, but you don't read this book and meditate on this book and speak this word out. And it will cause healing to come to all your flesh. He said, my sayings, my son, attend to my word. Attend to my words. If we will read our Bibles and meditate in the word as much as we watch TV and do other things, we'll be some strong Christians. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're supposed to meditate in the word day and night, all the time. Amen. Why? Because that you, you're under attack and other people you love and care about are under attack. Amen. I've been well and, and, and whole for many, many years. Amen. My wife can tell you I stay well. Doctors, they don't understand it. They're trying to figure it all out. They can't figure out how I'm staying healthy and looking young. Some are, are, are trying to prophesy at a certain age I'm going to get arthritis and a certain age I'm going to get this. I told that doctor I ain't getting none of that stuff. Amen. I'm learning. I'm learning about. I read about health. I read about eating health. I read about this Brad's vinegar and some honey and some uh, about a, a, a half a cup of, of water and in a, uh, a 16 ounce uh, cup, get you about a half a cup of water and some brag filling and some honey and some lemon and drink it in the morning and drink it in the evening. Amen. All this stuff. You got to learn about this stuff. Amen. I went back to my chiropractor after doing that. I've done it. Amen. I didn't take about a good two weeks. Amen. This happened a few years ago. Amen. And all of a sudden he said, Man, what now happened? I said, man, I'm telling you. He said, my, my wife been doing that for years. I was like, why didn't you tell me? See, a lot of things Satan will hide from you. But it's somewhere in a book. It's somewhere. You got to read. You got to, oh, hallelujah. Again, amen, you take you about a, 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 a tablespoon of Bragg's vinegar, amen, and honey, and about a, table, a tablespoon or two tablespoons of of honey and, and some water, some warm water, amen, and the lemon. Put you some lemon in there, do it in the morning and do it in the evening. You'll be surprised what will happen to your body. Hallelujah. In fact, vinegar, brag vinegar, cures a lot of stuff. Helps, helps a lot of, help your body in a lot of ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, you got to eat right now. You got to do these things. God wants you well. We need some healthy saints to do this thing. And God wants you well. And listen at me. You got to take an active role in laying hands on the sick. Tell God, God, how can I be laying hands on the sick? And I'm sick myself. I want to be well so I can do your job. I want to do well so I can do this assignment. That's what I told God many, many years ago when Dr. said it. Hey, uh, I, went, I was applying for a job as a substitute teacher, amen, and they were saying something about they found something in my body that was related to tuberculosis. And I told that doctor, wait a minute here, give me two weeks, I'll be back to see you in two weeks. Guess what I did? Went home, I was staying with my mom. Boy, I got in this word, I started reading every healing scripture I could, I filled my mind up with it. I loaded myself up with it every day, every morning. I shut myself in that room, amen, in that living room. With me, and I start reading this word, meditating this word concerning healing. And I'm telling you, I went back to that doctor, amen. And he said, oh, can't find it. What now happened? Glory to God. I don't know what happened. He said, but you were just as healthy 
Glory to God. Told me at that time, so you got the body of a 16-year-old. And I was in my 20s then. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God can heal you. Hallelujah. In this, in this book, I talk about Mother Brown. Mother Brown has gone on to be with the Lord now. And Mother Brown had a tumor in her body the size of a grapefruit. The doctor said, we're going to have to cut her on one side all the way to the other side. Just cut up like that. Mother Brown came out in that doctor's office with me and my wife. She said to me and my wife, she said, Bishop, I don't want to be cut on. She said, my body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. She thought, feeling the unction of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I said, okay, mom, according to your faith, be it unto you. See, God works by faith. I said, according to your faith, be it unto you. But we told Mother Brown what she had to do. We said, Mother Brown, we're going to get you some healing tapes. See, I got a lot of healing CDs. And, and I got some by Kenneth Hagen. Got some by Creflo. I got some by uh, Gloria Copeland. I got some by Kenneth Copeland. And, and today you can look at these things uh, man, right there on YouTube. Amen. And Facebook, all this stuff. Come on, saints. Stop being lazy. You better get, 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 get upset at this devil who trying to take you out before time. Get upset at this devil who don't want you to finish your course strong and mighty and powerful. And I'm telling you, we told her to do that. And we started meditating this word. And I would give a call and give a healing screen. We would talk on the phone. Amen. And, and, and pump up about faith. Hallelujah. And then one, uh, we was on a shut-in. God had spoke to us about going on a shut-in and praying and fasting. And while we was on that shut-in, the Lord spoke to my wife. She was in the back. Amen. Uh, in the back of the church and came up to the front. She said, it's time now to lay hands on Mother Brown. We lay hands on Mother Brown. Mother Brown fell out on the power of God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, she went back to that doctor. The doctor was astounded. Said, no cancer is anywhere in your body. Amen. And every year she had to go, you know, when you get diagnosed with cancer, every year they got to check you out. Amen. Because they believe it returned after five years. Well, I'm going to tell you something. She lived many, many more years cancer free. Every year she would come back. And said, Pastor, guess what? I said, what, Mother Brown? She said, they didn't find no cancer. Hallelujah. We have another young lady in there. I talk about it in this book. Amen. Been living many years free from breast cancer. A lot of people die from breast cancer. But Sister Elizabeth is still alive, totally healed from breast cancer. I'm telling you, God will heal your body. But you got to get serious about your healing. This book, Where Are Those Miracles? Releasing the Power of God. Some of you got it at home. Got it in your shelf. Won't, no, won't do you no good till you go back and read it. This need to be something you read all the time. Also, it talks about your finances. My wife can tell you anytime we deal with financial situations, she'll tell you how I deal with it. I get right in that word. I start listening to Apostle Leroy Thompson. I start listening to uh, uh, Jerry Savelle. I listen to everybody who's teaching about prosperity. And I flood my spirit because the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. I flood my spirit and my soul with prosperity scripture. I get my own CDs out. I listen at what I said about prosperity. And guess what happened? Boom! Money started coming from left to the right, to the front, to the back. Because why? I defeated the devil by getting the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is true on any subject. When you meditate in this word day and night, you will prosper. Hallelujah. What was that? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. My wife used to have cluster headaches. Had them for years. I talk about that. Amen. And I'm telling you, glory to God. She got mad at that devil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And got in that word. And I'm telling you what happened. Boom. Heal. Well, this works. This ain't nothing I'm telling you might work. This is something I'm telling you will work. You got to do it. Hallelujah. And anybody that's watching me right now, if you've been diagnosed with COVID-19, you will not die. You will live and you will declare God's goodness to the next generation. I'm going to pray with you right now. If you're sick in your body, if any disease is anywhere near your body trying to torment you, trying to hold you back, trying to keep you bound, I'm going to pray that in the name of Jesus, you be healed. We get ready to close right now with a word of prayer. Father, healing is the children's bread. Whether that man is saved or not, we know that your son Jesus has already died, shed his blood so they could be healed. In the name of Jesus, 
be healed from COVID-19. In the name of Jesus, be healed of cancer, blood pressure, back pain, leg pains. I command you to be whole from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed. I command new heart, new lungs, new liver, new kidney to grow inside your body. In Jesus' name, behold, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Something powerful just happened in your life right now. I, I guarantee you, glory to God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command the gallbladder to be well. I speak life over you, and you will not die but live. You will experience the power of God. This is a healing day for you. Hallelujah. Write it down. Mark it down. Amen. Tell the devil on what's the day? What's the day? August the 2nd. August the 2nd, I got healed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I talk about another young lady in this book, Sister Iris White, got totally healed. Amen. Of, of, of cancer. Totally healed. Amen. Of, 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 of cancer in the kidney area. Totally well. Glory to God. The doctor never had to cut on her. Totally well. Totally disappeared. God took it away. Amen. Because why? I told her what to do. Gave her healing scriptures like I'm giving you now. Healing scriptures. Told her to meditate on them. Told her to, her to meditate on them. Told her children, everybody come around. Don't let nobody talk doubt. Don't nobody talk unbelief around her. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, I, and, and when we, we, we had prayer with her, lay hands on her, she fell out on the power of God that was in the month of September. And I told her right down that day, I said, no matter what the doctor said, this is the day you got healed. Glory to God. Well, guess what happened? When the doctor went there to do what they thought was going to be surgery, they didn't have to do it. Because she was totally well. Healed in the name of Jesus. I can give you testimony on testimony. They write in this book to tell you about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray for you that right now that, that any part of your body that's damaged. I pray for you, Monique, that from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, that toe, whatever part of that body that's not moving right, I command it to get in line, be healed, be whole in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. That's right. How, that's it. It's simple. It's no harder to say be healed in Jesus' name than it is for you to give your life to Jesus. Jesus said, which is harder, easier to say? Thy sins be forgiven thee? Arise, take up your bed and walk. That's what he said to the man. Arise, take your bed up and walk. Man got up and went to walking. Hallelujah. That's what's going to happen to you today. Thank you for watching. If you desire to be saved, if you're not born again and you're watching this, God wants you to be saved. You don't want to be a person to have a strong body outwardly, but your spirit and soul spends eternity in the lake of fire. Today is a day of salvation for you and God wants you to be saved, sir. He wants you to be saved, ma'am. He wants to make a new man and a new woman out of you. And only God can do that. He can take out the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. He'll give you a heart to love him, to love his word, to love his people. Before I got saved, I wasn't thinking about the church. I wasn't thinking about God's people because I was not born again. But when I got saved, I began to love God and love his people. And that's what happened to you. Today is your day. If you want to be saved, I want you right where you are, in your bedroom and in your living room, surrender your life to Christ. Say, dear God, right now, come into my life. I know I am a sinner. I repent. I turn to you today. And today, I want you to be my God and I want to be your child. I will serve you until I die. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to call this number, 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. All right, you got it? That's the number I need you to call, 252-563-5382. need you to call that number after this program goes off. Amen. All right. Somebody's asking for prayer. Amen. In your kidney area, I want you to lay your hands on that part of your body. Lay your hands on that part of your body right now. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
this person needs a touch in their kidneys. That's a light thing for you to do. So right now in the name of Jesus, we take authority over the pain. We take authority over the discomfort. We take authority over anything that's trying to damage and destroy their kidneys. We speak life. We speak wellness. We speak wholeness from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be restored in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now praise him like you believe it's happening. Praise him like you believe it's so. And watch God do the work. Hallelujah. No matter what it is. Amen. Next week, maybe when I, I'm going to just do a, a little bit of reading some scriptures. And we're going to spend some more time letting you call in, letting your text in to get prayer. God wants you well. He wants you well today. Yes, he does. He wants you to live out your days happy and excited. Now, listen, all these messages can be seen right here on Facebook or you can go to YouTube, amen, and check these messages out. The message from last week, the message from this week, all these great messages. Don't waste time during this pandemic. You're inside, you can't go anywhere. Get in this word. Look at this stuff. Hear it. Faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of God. In the book of Galatians, the apostle Paul asked the question, how doeth that person work miracles among you? Do he do it by the uh, works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The answer to that is by the hearing of faith. Miracles take place because people hear faith. Faith creates miracles. When you hear what God is doing, when you hear that God raising people up on the wheelchair, in this book, we talk about a young man who God raised up on the wheelchair right in our services, right before their very eyes. We got pictures and photos of it. Not in this book, but we got pictures and photos. Amen. I keep them around to remind myself that God is a healer. He's a miracle worker. That's what Rance Allen told you. He's a miracle worker. Well, listen, if this ministry is being a blessing to you, look, I'm going to tell you how you can sow into it. I need you to understand you can write us at Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. That address again is Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Also, you can download the Gear Plus app. When you download the Gear Plus app, type in Newness of Life Christian Center. When you type in Newness of Life Christian Center, you can show that way or you can type in 27886 when you download the Gear Plus app. Type in 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center will pop up and you can sow a seed that way. Also, if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I, we are good ground. You can go to your cash app. If you got cash app, you can go to your cash app. Go hit that dollar sign. Type in the letter R and then type in the word determine. D-E-T. Yeah, let me see that. Let me see that right there. Sounds yeah, like yeah, yeah. All right, good. The person is not on this, amen, but here's the wheelchair he came in on. He came in on this wheelchair, amen, and after the service, he was pushing this wheelchair out of the church. You hear what I'm saying? That's the kind of God we serve. You know how he got that miracle? Because we were teaching about the authority that we have as believers. Faith come by hearing, Amen. And he was the first one that came in the prayer line that day when I asked, does anybody need prayer? And watch what, what happened. This same young man, you see him there in the red shirt, this young man, after he got healed, guess what he was doing? He, it's a, maybe a little glare on it. Amen. He started helping me pray for the sick people. <laughs> see, the devil had him sick, had him in a wheelchair. God healed him. And then he started helping me lay hands on the sick. Ain't God good? This stuff is real. This stuff is real, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God wants you well, and then he wants you laying hands on people. Listen, when God heals you, you start healing people. You start laying hands on other people and watch God do stuff in you. That's why I pray for the sick all the time. I even teach young preachers who are coming up in ministry. They, a lot of them, they go preach places, and they be excited about preaching. I said, notice one thing you did. They go and run revival. I said, how you run a revival? And you don't never ask, is anybody sick? And you don't pray for nobody sick? No. 
When you have revival, revival is to help man get well, spirit, soul, and body. A real revival demands that you ask, is anybody sick? We ready to pray for the sick. How do you minister to sick people? Because somebody in there needs a touch in their body. Somebody in there. Hallelujah. But today, preachers don't pray for the sick because they know they ain't got no power. They don't believe in the power of God. They in unbelief. They just want to preach a good message, but they don't want to prophesy and demonstrate the gospel through the word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Hallelujah. See, you spend time praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Sometimes God will show you who's going to be sick before you even get there. I can give you a testimony. Amen. I was at home one morning. I started praying in the spirit. And uh, that day, the whole day, I was praying in spirit. That night when I went to sleep in bed, I dreamed about a lady that was sick and she couldn't walk. And when I lay hands on her and prayed for her, she pulled that little dress up and started dancing in the house. Well, guess what happened? A young lady, amen, it was her grandmama. And a young lady came by my house and she said, Bishop Shaw, my grandmama is sick. She hasn't been able to get up out of the, the chair. She's at home. I was like, uh-oh, that's that dream. Amen. When I walked in the house, it looked just like what God showed me. I said, I told the lady about the dream that I had. I said, ma'am, I'm ready to pray for you now. God wants you well. I lay hands on her, and guess what she did? She jumped up. Glory to God. Start dancing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And giving God praise. Totally well. Totally whole. God wants you well. I'm out of time. I got to go. Don't forget. Get this book. Where are those miracles releasing the power of God? Now listen. You got to pre-order this one. Long distance runner. Running to receive the prize. Call us at 252-641-0098. I took some time. To get this word of you because God wants you well. He done it once before. He wants to do it again. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. Thank you Todd the man. All rights and all privileges go to him for that great, great song. <laughs> done it once before. He's ready to do it again. God bless you. Don't forget, every Tuesday night at 7.30, Bible study right here on Facebook. 7 o'clock to 7.30, we're talking to young people. Right now we are. Amen. It's Sharp Points is our program. And every Sunday at 10.15 and every Sunday night until the Lord releases us off of it, we're going to be right here talking about getting well, getting healed. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Same God.